Fuel injector testing with lab scopes, one of our most valuable tests. We're also going to show you how it ties in to some of the other testing things we do. You're going to do this test when you think you have a fuel delivery problem that may be caused by the injectors. This test will verify the electrical operation of the injectors and many times find dirty injectors. Now you could get here by looking at scan data fuel trim. See if the fuel trim is over 15% from normal. That means plus 15 or minus 15. And yes, Doc and I know that 25-30% is where you're going to start setting codes. We're looking for problems. Remember, this is an average. You could have one injector causing much more bigger problems than shows up in the average. You could be here by doing an injector pressure drop test, where you take and pressurize the system, pulse the injector and see how much the pressure drops, repressurize the system and do each one independently. Only problem is that takes a lot of time and you could get here by looking at ignition lean out like this. Remember, just to refresh your memory in case you haven't looked at it recently, the spark is really ionizing gases and that fuel ionizes easier than air. What's happening here is we have less fuel, it's harder to ionize the spark and the voltage goes up, we have a lean out. Now this is a lot faster than any pressure drop testing. Some pressure drop testing are almost impossible to do. And between primary and secondary testing and showing you how you can find this, this is a good test to back that up. So all of these start working together. But voltage testing is the most common test we're going to do, but it's not the only test. We can also use current testing. It's capable of detecting some difficult problems. Now ohms testing, on the other hand, for resistance, can find some electrical problems but it has the problems detecting all the problems. We have an injector that shows 12 ohms of resistance with an ohm. We've had this thing now for 10 years. It works so good because when you hook it up, you put it in circuit, it draws almost three amps on the current test. This is the point we're making. There are tests that can be done that are better than routine tests. They go beyond scan data testing. Let's talk about how DSO testing goes beyond scan testing. With the lab scope, we can check supplied B plus to the injector. We can check the grounds for the injector. And we're going to show you how comprehensive that is. And we can look at the voltage spikes, which tells us about the coil integrity of the injector. And testing like this is the most common thing we do with a lab scope. None of this testing could be accomplished with scan data. Scan data tells us we have injection pulse width. Doesn't tell us what the voltage is. May tell us what battery voltage is, but not what gets to the injector. Doesn't tell us anything about ground, other than the fact that scan tool might not work because of a bad ground. And doesn't tell us anything about the voltage spike on the injector. All of these clues can quickly identify problems that wouldn't be found otherwise. Now, where do we do our connections? We start with the schematic. We're going to use this to detect voltage, driver, and injector problems as well as ground problems because we're going to be over here on the ground control side looking at the voltage. And this is a, is a sequential injector so they're all different. But now let me give you a hint. Look on the left over there at the blue highlighted wires for B+. They're all the same color code. As you look on the right, each color is different on the right because of sequential injection. That'll make life easier. When you see our example here, We've got to make sure that we've got good B+. Plus. There, look, all of them are the same color. When we get to this, in this particular car we're working on here, which was not that drawing, all of them were red. And we're going to put it in the other side because we want to be on the PCM side of the circuit. And this is where we're going to go for our, for our voltage waveform and do our voltage waveform testing. This is our typical voltage pattern. Now we're going to go through all the different measurements we're going to make. And we're going to tell you about some special setups we're going to have to do with this particular model of our Pico scope. But we start off by looking at the spike. First thing jumps out of us is that spike. That spike is directly proportional to the health of the windings in the injector. I said that slow because I want you to comprehend it. The windings, how good are they? Well, we expect to see spikes between 50 and 120 volts. And all of them should be equal. Most Fords are around 50, like this Ford here reads 53.94. We already know this is a Ford. We see some 80s and we see some 70s and 60s and 100s and a few 120s. It should be the same. If they're all the same, you got a good spike. The next thing I'm going to talk about, though, is this spike. It's over 50 volts. And because it's over 50 volts, the Pico we're using here requires we have a 20 to 1 adapter installed. 
And here's the instructions for that. It's called a 20 to 1 attenuator. That's too big a word. You put it in series with there. It shows you how to connect it in. It's to let the scope read above 50 volts. And the next thing we're going to look at is the ground. Now look at this beautiful ground. We got our smart cursor on there, and it's telling us what it is. It's 367 millivolts, 0.367 volts. We want it to be under 500. We want to see this line flat. Because if it's not flat, we probably have a bad ground. We have an old pattern we've had here for years. You can tell this scope doesn't have the resolution of the Pico. But look how much this pattern curves upward. This upward curving slope, and we tell you it's up over 500 millivolts, is a sign we have a bad ground. Now let's take a minute here and talk about grounds. Because all the grounds for all these injectors come through the PCM. So the PCM has to supply ground. If the only way to PCM can supply a good ground is if ground 101 above the starter is good. Now remember, we connected our negative lead to battery negative, and we can check this ground. Don't assume things like PCM grounds are just given. And don't use an ohmmeter to measure them. Use a voltmeter. The voltage drop, and let me show you how bad that voltage drop can look. Here is the voltage drop on that particular ground looking at this. Now this particular computer also is a Ford and it supplies ground for all of the injectors and the ignition. The ignition draws some pretty high current flows. When the ignition current is high, these little things ramp up. That's your ignition current flow. It goes up to 150 millivolts. But the point I want to make to you, if you're just using voltmeters, you read the average and say, wow, what's the average looks like? Oh, I'm only around 75 millivolts. While you may be reading the average of 75 millivolts, we're going over 150 millivolts on the spikes. What you see on your voltmeter is not nearly as good as what you're going to see right here. So use your lab scope. And we do this by using battery negative as our ground. You have to fix them all the way back. We recently fixed a problem the guy thought was the smartest man in the world. His scan tool wouldn't read data. And we said, well, can you get a spark? And he said, no, and we can't get a spark. And we had him check a ground. And he said, oh, ground voltage is 11.8 volts. We said, you've been cranking a vehicle for a long time. Yeah, it won't start. Towed it in. Driving along, quit. Scan tool won't work. I can't work on it. We said, you got a bad engine ground for the PCM. You're a genius. How did you figure that out? Anytime you lose ground for the PCM, every ground on your map, TPS, injectors, everything is going to have bad ground. So 11.8, that means the battery is badly discharged. Pay attention to ground and use a lab scope. We can't tell you enough how many cars we fix like that. Now we're going to look at B+. On the other side, where the current flow is not flowing and we're not ground enabled, we'll go to battery voltage. In this case, it's 14.22 volts. Now it should be within a half of volts of B+, plus the battery. If not, you need to fix the circuitry going to it because you want to get full voltage to it. All of the stuff we just looked at, none of it was visible in scan data. Scan data gave us no clue as to how high the voltage spike was on the... In in the scan data gave us no clue of how good the ground was. Scan data gave us no clue as to exactly the voltage applied to the injector we're working on. It would tell us we got a 14.2 volt battery voltage. Well, that's fine. We use that with this test to verify this test. But remember, this pattern can save you lots of times, but it's not the only thing. Injector current tests can uncover problems that may not be detected by other tests at all. Full current flow undercovers resistance problems like we talked about that may not show up through Ohm's testing, and we can see the pendle movement. Remember, for current to be right, we've got to have proper voltage, correct resistance of the injector, and a good ground supply. We're checking three things at once, sort of like we were doing before. Now, we've put this together here to look at the injector voltage on the bottom and injector current flow at the top. As you notice, when the ground enable goes down, current flow starts. And when ground enable stops, goes up, current flow drops. So it is the same. We're looking at the same thing caused at the same time. We're over here looking on the control side of the circuit, and we're looking at that. We're going to hook up our low amps pro around the wire. In this case, we have to be hooking around the wire we are looking at earlier for, for B-plus supply. If you don't do it right, if you don't zero it, you get strange readings. This pattern we're looking at goes below zero when current's turned off. Now, we can't be below zero amps. 
two main reasons we can't get to zero. Number one, you're trying to use a fuse and there's other stuff flowing through that fuse. Get off the fuse, get over on the injectors, get out in the harness, get away from the fuse. Two, you have not properly zeroed the meter. Press the, take, disconnect the low amps probe, press the zero, and get it back to normal. Sometimes you get it on upside down. If it's on upside down, the pattern's going to go off the screen. Just take the probe off, re-zero it, turn it around, face it the other direction. It's facing the wrong direction. Once we get those done, we're done. Now, the next question, when you get it done, what are we supposed to read? In this case, it says we're looking for 0.9 to 1.1 on this Malibu. Uh, the next pattern we're going to look at is not going to be a Malibu. It's going to be a different car. We got it for a reason. This one has a peak amps of about 0.75 amps. But the thing we want to look at here is this beautiful pendle hump. When the current changes, as the pendle moves inside the injector, it causes a change in the magnetic field, which causes a minor disruption of the voltage. The snappier the, mil the pendle moves, the nicer the knee looks. Look how clean this one is. This one's a little less than halfway up. A lot of people put a lot of faith into this. Now, we find problems with it occasionally, but we don't live and die by the pendle hump. Here's a pendle hump that happens much higher and smaller. This happens to be off that Malibu we're looking at with 1.1 amps current flow. This injector was dirty. It caused a small pendle hump. We verified it with a lean condition on the ignition patterns. We looked at that cylinder. Did it look lean? Yes. Two things. We have an absolute finding. No, we got to fix it. So we don't live or die by pendle humps here without reinforcing them somewhere else. But this is a classic case of how a good pendle hump and a bad pendle hump looks. Not all pendle humps are going to be at the same level, so compare them within the same vehicle. They're not universal. This is the one and only time we have found a sticking injector with a pendle hump. This has no pendle hump, but look, there's you can't see any movement at all. This was a stuck injector, but we verify this by looking at the ignition pattern. I hope you're hearing what we're saying. The diagnosis, all of these things work together. The voltage can find bad injectors that cause lean conditions. Current can also find shorted injectors that cause lean conditions. It can identify sticking pendle, dirty pendles. But verify it all with fuel trim and ignition patterns to make a complete diagnosis. It doesn't take as long to do this. And once you got the scope out, go either the primary or secondary complete this picture and get a good valid diagnosis and prevent comebacks and solve more problems and sell more cleaning and do good cleaning jobs on these injectors.